Building your own arcade cabinet is a really, really enjoyable experience and you can build it to your own specifications. This one here, I've got twin joysticks, I've got dual light guns, I've got a PS3, a PS4 built in, PC, the whole shebang, it's really, really cool. Now, I've been asked quite a few times in various comments, have I got any plans on how to make one like this? I haven't, because I did do it all in my head and translated that to the real thing. But what I will do in this video is give you detailed instructions on how you can make one just like this. Now, one of the cool things about this cabinet is, is how easy it is to actually make. All it needs is 10 different cuts of wood and eight of those are the same width. So first of all, let's briefly talk about the wood. You don't want to skimp out on the crappy, flimsy stuff. Get 18 mil MDF or OSB. OSB is good, it gives a unique look, but I like MDF, it's just much easier to work with. So get the 18 mil stuff, not that flimsy, thin stuff. No good. Now the first two pieces of wood are for the sides. Now the height and depth of these are really, really important. The height decides how you will stand at the machine and if it's a comfortable place to stand at as well as be able to put a stool under there and sit there because both ways of playing are important and the depth is important as well because you need to be the right natural distance away from the screen so it looks natural to look at. And for these two pieces of wood, the depth is going to be 62 centimeters and the height one meter exactly or 100 centimeters. Two of those. So once those are cut, that's your two side pieces. You can leave them like that and have them oblong shapes, entirely up to you. But what I would do is round off the edges with a electrical sander. What I've done is got a saw and just snipped off a small corner of each edge and then use an electric sander to just round them off to give it a nice curved effect. Because you are going to need that. Because when you put this trim on, it's not going to go very well around the corner, which isn't rounded off. So make sure you round off them corners. So if you want this curved effect, what I'll do is measure the height of your joysticks and make sure that this part here is enough to comfortably hold the depth of the joysticks. Like my ones here, I've got a depth here of 13 centimeters. So if you're using these Hori Wrap 4 joysticks, same as mine, then 13 centimeters is enough for the top. And the bottom part can be literally whatever you choose to whatever you think looks nice. But what I would do is once you've got that and you've drawn your curve and you've cut that out with a jigsaw, place that part on the second side, draw that with a pencil, then you've got a exact replica of what you've done before and it's jigsaw that out and you've got two exact matching sides. So from here on in, the remaining eight pieces of wood are all the same width. All you've got to do is then cut the correct height or depth for each particular one. The width of those eight pieces of wood is going to be determined by whatever joysticks you decide to use. But make sure the joysticks are large enough so if you're going to play two player, you've got sufficient space at the machine so you don't feel like cramped by the other player. So measure the width of your two joysticks you're going to use very carefully because this is going to be the width of your machine before you've added the side panels. For the next piece of wood, which is for our screen, my one is actually 78 centimeters high. That's because it goes a little bit further down into the machine. The base which the joysticks sit on is also the base which the screen sits on. It doesn't sit directly on top of here. You don't want that, otherwise you can slide forward. I've cut out some legs so it slots into that area. So basically the size of this screen board is gonna be the same width as your two chosen joysticks, but make sure it's tall enough to fit your chosen screen in properly with a cutout for the soundbar or speakers at the same time. Well, just to show in more detail what I mean about those legs on the screen, as you can see, they go down into the machine slightly. So when this top plate is back in place, there's no way that that screen board can slide anywhere. Next up, we have our control panel cover, which is this piece of wood here. So this is gonna be another custom size. Again, it's gonna be the exact width as your two chosen joysticks, but the depth of it is gonna be based again on how deep your joysticks are because there's another piece of wood under here which we'll come to in a minute which is basically a flat piece of wood which goes all the way to the back of the machine which is what the joysticks sit on but basically you're going to measure this piece of wood from the back of the, your joysticks right to the back of the machine and if i just pull my sound bar out a little bit uh, you can see that it doesn't have to be an exact distance it's just enough to go near the back of the machine and lock in these pieces from the from the screen board which I showed a minute ago. 
one other really important thing about this piece of wood is as well is to make sure it's raised up a little bit because these buttons take up some significant depth more than what a lot of people think so measure the depth of these buttons when they're installed and then add some little struts wooden struts along the side like this so when this board is sitting on top you're not going to have these touching the base which is going to be the next piece of wood we come to in a minute next piece of wood is this panel piece here this is a big piece of wood again it's going to be the width of your two chosen joysticks but this is going to be the depth basically which is near the front of the machine but allow enough to put on this front panel because this front panel is important it stops joysticks moving forward so knock off two centimeters for that and again at the back of the machine just knock off a centimeter as well at the front because you don't want that back this back panel here if i can just can I get around there yeah just about a lot you don't want to go in all the way to the back because we want to fit on this backboard as well to give the structure some strength and that has to sit inside slightly as well because when you add this trim on if you add this right to the back it's going to be getting in the way and you'll have to cut a notch out which you don't want that'd be a pain so just make sure this back part all sits just inside the side panels ever so slightly so eventually when we fit this trim on it'll go on really neatly without any hassle at all for the next piece of wood this is actually an additional extra if you like it's not actually essential but i added it to mine because with these joysticks there's a touch pad at the back which you have to get to now and again for certain games and the way these turn on is there's a little button at the back there you have to get in and press that so i added this little bar here so if ever i need to get to that touch pad i can just lift this bar out like that and i can get to it easily it also enable you to reach the uh, controls easily because it makes this easy to lift lift up then and reach those buttons there if any maintenance needs to be done on those wires underneath but this is not essential but if you do add that obviously you need to trim off a little piece of that control panel cover there and i think it actually adds a nice little little touch to the machine makes it look pretty good at the same time next piece is our front trim this is a nice little bit of trim it makes it look really nice and professional and it serves that purpose to make it look good but it also stops the joystick being able to move forward as well i've actually got a extra um locking mechanism for these underneath there as well to make sure they can't come forward but it's a nice little touch to add on and you can make it whatever height you want basically it's going to be dependent on your joysticks but again the same width as your two chosen joysticks next up we have the front panel now this is an important piece because again it's going to be the same width as your two chosen joysticks but where you place it determines how much internal space you have inside the internal enclosure here i only need this space for a pc a little retro shooter console and a ps3 console but if you've got a bigger powerful gaming pc or something like that you may want a bit more space in that case you're going to place this front panel further forward and basically the shallower the curve on your sides the more internal space you allow because let's imagine this is like a rectangular shape so it's straight down you didn't carve out these pieces here you could bring this right out if you wanted to and have absolutely tons of internal space but bear in mind you want to have your knees underneath as well when you're sitting at this on a bar stool or something so just enough space to fit in your pc with a few inches either side would usually be sufficient and once you've done that you can add things like these gun holsters here if you're not using light guns obviously you don't need to bother with this next stage if you're adding light guns which is a really nice touch and you can just carefully cut out a kind of u-shaped cut out there for each gun use the cutout from that first one as your template for the second one make sure they're even both sides you don't want it looking unsymmetrical that would be horrible and uh, draw around that cutout from that one so you get an exact replica of both sides and then do a little hole in the bottom feed the wire through from your gun so it parks in the top next up we have our storage area lid now, there's two ways to go about this i have got this on a hinge which makes it look nice and neat and tidy and it's easy to use as well but if you don't want to go to the hassle of fixing hinges and stuff like that just simply add a piece of wood across the back which is going to act like a shelf basically do it at the same height as this part here so where you can just fit that piece of wood on top and you just lift it off when you need to access the inside but one thing though just make sure you shave off a small amount from the edges because you don't want it rubbing on the sides of the machine when you lift it up and down or lift it out if you do go for the hinged option you do actually have to add an extra piece of wood like this to bring it out slightly you can't attach those hinges directly 
to this backboard here because if you did that it, they're just not going to open properly and you want to be able to lift it up and leave it there like that as well which is why you need an extra piece of wood at the back like this this is actually really useful and i'd recommend this anyway and the reason is not only does it serve that good purpose there but it allows me to attach like a, a mains block to there easily and the expansion hub extension hub thing for my retro shooter console guns and, and things like that so yeah def definitely recommend adding that bit on anyway and the last piece of wood we have our backboard here again the same width as your two chosen joysticks and the height of this is going to be basically to just above this part here so you can attach this main base to it but how far it goes down is kind of up to you but do leave a gap i'll just try and show inside the machine it doesn't go all the way to the bottom this is really important because you need ventilation for your pc and consoles let's see if i can aim inside yeah you can see look it only goes down to there and then there's a nice amount of gap which basically allows ventilation for pc and console and things like that so don't do that all the way to the bottom otherwise you could experience overheating problems in the future which you don't want right so that's all our pieces of wood cut and now we come to the exciting phase which is the assembly process this is actually pretty straightforward and not as complicated as it may first appear but i started off by just laying one of the side pieces flat on the floor and then i got the top panel which is what our joysticks go on and using modesty blocks attached that in a basic way so it's kind of quite delicate at the moment sort of sitting sitting there vertically you have to be a little bit careful i then added a extra beam here just to make it extra strong and again make sure that the screw here is only just enough to sort of go into your side panel enough you don't want it coming through the other side i'd like the other side to be completely clean looking without any visible screws once you've done that you can add the back panel and in the back panel means you can fix it to the side panel on the inside as well as the top panel which gives it immediate strength then once you've done that you can do the same on the other side you can sit the other side panel on top attach it in exactly the same way using those really handy modesty blocks you can get these from hardware stores really really good you can use these and they just make the whole thing just that much simpler if you're using 18 mil wood the screws supplied with these will automatically be the right size to screw in in a nice strong manner without any chance of protruding and poking through the other side so at this point you'll have both your sides attached you'll have the panel where the joysticks sit fixed you have the back panel there so just add in the front support panel there like that the front panel and you are nearly done so that'll be the main part of the machine put together then obviously you have to add in your screen now this part is actually really important you need to be very careful on this part because you need a nice fit for the screen you want to measure it really accurately be really careful when cutting that out and make sure it's nicely centralized what i did i then added a perspex screen on top of this gives it a nice arcade look and then i added this vinyl overlay you can buy this from places like ebay it's very cheap you just gotta be again really careful when you cut this out uh, make sure it's cut to the same size as your perspex overlay be really careful to get it on nice and straight and um, fix it onto the backboard with really good double-sided tape like the 3m stuff or gorilla tape one other thing i did add which was pretty useful is if i take out this bar here now if i just lift out a joystick i added a modesty blocks to the underneath panel here because these actually fit in place where the joysticks sit so the joysticks sit right up to the back of those modesty blocks and to the very front on that one so even if this bar wasn't in place the joysticks aren't going to go anywhere but i still wanted this front bar there because it looks nice now one other quick thing to add and this is specific if you're including light guns in this is if you're using a aim track system which requires a, a light bar sensor bar then don't forget to measure that accurately and cut out that little piece into the wood at the same time it's going to look much much better if it's built into the system which is how i had this originally i have actually since removed that because i now use the retro shooter gun system with these little sensors around i find them a lot lot more accurate than the uh, aim track overall and i'm going to be doing a review on that system really soon um i might actually expand upon this i might actually make these a bit longer because i actually really enjoy wii light gun game still so i might actually add a, a wii into this eventually and maybe make that a little bit longer and fit that light sensor bar into there so i can use the wii light gun games too 
Like things like the buttons, if you're going for a main base system and things like that, is fairly easy to do. Um, but yeah, very basic. I can't really give you help on that because it's kind of one of those things that is going to be customised to whatever you're you're doing. Like for me, just a one-player button, a two-player button. I use this button for pause, and I use this one for a soft reset. And obviously, this is the, the coin button for within main. But apart from that, that's all I really needed for main because I can choose games by a normal. Uh, Xbox 360 style controller there or by the joysticks themselves um, and after that it's just a case of adding in your finishing touches like this nice arcade trim it is pretty expensive I think it cost me about £80 to get this done but um, measure every single edge double check measure it twice add an extra meter just for good measure because there's other bits you might have forgotten about like going around curves takes up a small amount of extra length don't forget all the little bits like if you added this bar add that in add in these bits here for this part don't forget you need two lots for the front part here so measure all them bits don't forget like this part here don't forget the underneath part and um, yeah double check that kind of thing you don't want to order a load of that kind of stuff and then find you're a little bit short but yeah it's a very enjoyable process and the rewards are great because when you're playing on your own machine which you made yourself there's just a really good feeling of satisfaction about it at the same time and you can expand upon it as well when i first made this i just made it made it as a pc based system but since then i've added a retro shooter console a ps3 a ps4 there's vr attached to this and even the move controllers for the ps3 move guns games and things like that so really cool but um if i've missed anything out or any details you need further instruction on give me a shout in the comments and i'll do my best to help but thanks for watching this video feel free to share it in the forums and things like that really appreciate the support but thanks for watching and i'll catch you again next time bye for now